Welcome everybody to the what is it? August? August. Just August happened. version. Oh man. <laughs> of the Atlanta Tableau Users Group. Uh, we are excited to have Nicole Clausen with us. Um, we've got uh, Anna Ford is normally with us, but she is out uh, on a trail running uh, and doing some amazing things that I don't want to do. Uh, and so <laughs> yeah. we're we're gonna be here in her stead. Um, but excited to have folks joining. Nicole, we were just talking about the fact that it is school time. It uh, is. Kids are going back to school. Yes. All right. Started a new school on August 1st. So there you go. Yeah. I was gonna ask if yours are old enough for well for it's pre-K, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> so but now officially in pre-K and not in a daycare. So yeah, that's a step for sure. Yes. <laughs> my uh my fourth one is in pre-K. Uh okay. it's the last year of pre-K for the Davis household. But he came home and he was like so mad. And we're like, dude, what's the what's the issue? And he was like, they want me to learn all day. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, what's wrong with that? He's like, I want to play. Like, what is this? Like, what are we learning for? Um, I was like, but it doesn't get any better from here. <laughs> what was that? I was joking. He's a, he's a man after my heart. Yeah. He's a um, play. Yeah, he's like his daddy. He he uh, he's uh, he has to be like an eight on the enneagram. He's like super challenger, um, and you know he wants to be against whatever the thing is that's right in front of him. So <clears throat> so fascinating. Kids yeah. are awesome and hilarious and nutty all at the same time. I'm just I'm waiting because he likes to learn, but he my son he loves to learn, but it's on his schedule. So. If it's not to, like, if he doesn't want to do it, then he is so stubborn. And I'm like, ah, oh, it's going to be great. <laughs> like, good luck. <laughs> there you go. Well, and, and to that end, uh, you know, Nicole, let's give the folks what they want. Uh, let's uh, do a quick intro of you. Uh, you know, last time we were together was uh, in June. We kind of had, uh, you know, hey, we wanted to see how everything went and, uh, you know, just, uh, thank Karen for everything she did um, but then also at the same time welcome you as uh, our new uh, co-host and co-leader here at the Atlanta mm -hmm. Tableau user group so super excited and very grateful to have you join us into the craziness <laughs> um, of helping to put together the best tug in the world so why don't you tell us a little bit about your family Awesome. Well, thank you guys for inviting me to join. I'm super excited to now help uh, co-lead the best tug in the world. Um, so yeah, my family is myself, my husband, and my four-year-old son, Oliver. Um, my LinkedIn picture from last time is old. So, but even that like five-month-old baby sticking his tongue out, he still does that. So um, yeah, so we're here in Atlanta um, from Michigan. And so every time I get to go on a plane and fly, my son is just like thrilled. And we usually get to the airport early so we can just sit and watch the planes. And he just loves Love it. That. That's awesome. Oh, um, yeah. So besides that, we also have a cat that is a cat. That's a pile of fur it is my cat. Who's some, actually, she's not here, but usually she is just sitting in my bookshelf joining in on my meetings. I love it. And where do you do Tableau on a daily basis? Uh, I'm at Apt Associates right now. So okay. they are a, oh, they work with um, federal agencies, nonprofits and such to um, do, it's called an implementing partner. So I use my data viz skills to support their mission of improving the quality of life and economic well-being of people worldwide. This is why I wrote it down. It's like, what I'm doing? So I'm going to read it. Perfect. Well, we're excited to have you. Um, <laughs> and uh, look forward to many, many great tugs uh, together in our future. All right. There we go. So speaking of tugs, we are obviously virtual right now, but really hoping to start going back in person um, quarterly, if not more often. But in order to get back to a tug in person, we need a host. So we're looking for places that can host about 150 people. 
um, and has the technology ability to you know, have a screen, has a mic, and um, ATUG can provide snacks, water, and soda, but you have to be allowed to have snacks, water, and soda when you're there. So if anyone has a space that they want to host a meeting, please email us. Jen just put the email in the chat. Um, and then we're also always looking for presenters and topics as well. So you can either in the chat or email, let us know like if there's a topic you want to have us talk about, if there's speakers you want to have us see, you know, we'll still do some virtual. And so anyone, sky's the limit, we can have anybody come as well. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, we, we had our kind of happy hour thing back in November of last year. Um, we're thinking about you know doing an in-person as soon as maybe October, maybe November. Um, but TBD, like all the plans are still up in the air. But we we would love to hear from you if uh, if you can help bring this to life with us. And uh, Jen just put into the chat uh, the best way to reach this group, which is a tug at analyticvision.com. So uh, grateful in advance for anybody who wants to raise their hand and and. We'll try to figure out the logistics together. So it says the chat might be disabled. Oh, really? Yeah, someone just in the QA said the chat is disabled. That's so <laughs> exciting. I love technology when it works <laughs> at its optimal speed. Jen's going to work on it. All right. So uh, we are absolutely excited to have uh, some amazing folks. Uh, we got both Paul Lisborg and Matthew Pimenta here today with us. Um, both of these gentlemen have played uh, some big roles in ATUG in the past. If you've been a longtime subscriber, uh, you will know that Mr. Paul Lisborg uh, was actually uh, the leader of ATUG for a good season. Um, you know, and that was back when we used to meet in person pretty often uh, and uh, has moved on to Tableau. And so excited to hear from Paul today. Um, you know, it, Paul's resume is long and distinguished, uh, but ultimately what you need to know um, is that he is a great community leader. Um, he's passionate about data visualization and he's married to um, what I was told uh, to tell you all is my favorite employee here at Analytic Vision. Um, and then uh, Matthew Pimenta, uh, we're excited to have you as well. Matthew has been a multi-time presenter uh, loves to dig in on uh, the beautiful aspects of Tableau and to build great and cool and awesome things. And so I'll talk about that more in a minute, but excited to have both of you guys here. Um, guys, do we want to kick it over? Paul, let you grab the wheel. I certainly Paul, will. Thank you it. so much for that introduction. I just want to make sure I'm sharing the right, the right screen. Am Looks I? Good. It's really pretty. Okay, it is it, not my blue screen. It, hopefully, it's Dashboard Trinity. Oh, it is. Okay, yeah. excellent. Very hey, nice. that you know, this is the this is the part that stresses me out most is the 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 changing of of screens. And I do this three or four times a day, and it never seems to work right. So I've got yeah. it right once today. Um, so is. once again, thank you for having me. Um, looking forward to today's topic. It's going to be real easy. You won't have to take notes. Um, just sit back, relax. This will be this visualization will be on my um, Tableau um, public um, profile. So you look me up on Tableau public, and you'll be able to download all this stuff and look under the hood. And you won't have to worry about taking notes. You can just sit back and relax today. Um, a little bit about me, as um, as Nelson had mentioned, I'm now working for Tableau. However, I was introduced to Tableau way back in 2009. That seems so long ago um, by a person that we probably have heard um, before. His name is Dan Murray. He actually wrote the book, Tableau, Your Data. Who knew it? We both lived in the same tiny little town of Noonan, Georgia. Um, he came over and, and said, hey, I would like to to show y'all something about this tool that's going to make your life so much easier. And I go, what could be easier than Excel and SSRS? And he said, ah, let me show you. And literally within 20 minutes, we had a dashboard created 
looking at all our phone center data, which which we had never even attempted to look at that data before. So um, I, I became immediately um, became addicted to Tableau. I'm based here in Atlanta, Georgia. Here, dead in the center screen is me and my lovely wife Jennifer, our two children. Although they're a little bit taller than that now, um, back when we went to to Disney World. Um, but what I want you to pay particularly attention to is this upper left um, slide because that is the very, very first Tableau users group meeting. And I, it was in the fall. I can't remember. It was October, November of 2009. There were 32 people that were present. Once again, Dan Murray's in that picture right there in front of the whiteboard because I think he was given the presentation. Um, um, Andy Kreeble is another Zen master called, now we call him Visionary, um, that hails from, from a tug. Um, we have Mark Jackson from Piedmont Hospital and our very own Nelson Davis, all of Tableau Visionaries, people that are recognized as being, you know, excelling in what they do um, with Tableau and are willing to help. So I, I call that, that, that first tug out um, because it was the very first tug. Um, in the world, really, in the on the globe, we were the very first. We were leading the way. We didn't even realize it. But fast forward that ten years. Now, this was some time ago. This was 2019, 2020. I think it was 2019, or maybe been early 2020. Um, and and we had um, we had an enormous amount of people. So it has really grown. And to to the point to the slide earlier. I would suggest that if you're not a member of your tug, if this is your very first um, tug event, join one. Um, and more importantly, you know, um, try to become a leadership, you know, within a leadership role, try to present as often as they will have you present because you can learn so much um, by presenting. It makes you better at your craft, but you can also learn from others. So it's um it's a great resource. I encourage everyone to become members of a local tug. There's literally thousands of them across the globe now meeting in just about every major city. So make sure you join a tug um, and, 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 and raise your hand, lean in, um, present, and 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 really, you know, really make sure that that you're all in. So with that, I'm going to start with this email. Now I have um, I have kind of grayed out or have whited out. Can't remember um, from whom it came, but this actually landed in my inbox about two months ago, and um, I've highlighted what what the question was, but it was sent to Tableau support by a user way downstream within a very large organization. Um, and so all they knew was that they were using a Tableau dashboard. Um, and that's all they knew. They knew how to interact with it, but they were having a problem. It says, how do I change the year and the QAPI? Because the drop down menu, it has um, only has last year's data. So Imagine this, you're sitting there, you've created dashboards, maybe um, another team member has created dashboards, and something lands in your inbox that says, I can't get the drop down box to um, reveal this year's data. Well, you would have no clue if you didn't write that dashboard. So, um, you know, I could hypothetically say, well, maybe the data didn't refresh. Maybe you have something filtered um, prior to it that's, you know, exclusion. But I have no idea why this drop down uh, menu is not revealing last year's data. So that got me thinking what can we do? What can we encourage developers to do? to remedy some of this. Um, and I thought back um, to my experience with Tableau as a, a 10 year um, Tableau developer, what are some of the things that I used to do to help your end user know, you know, A, is the data fresh, um, who to contact, and that, that is what this whole Trinity talk is about. So I'm gonna get out of my, um, display mode here. I'm going to jump right into Tableau. That's why I love Tableau. I use Tableau as even as a PowerPoint 
um, most of the time so I could package the workbooks up, put them on Tableau Public, and then people can download them. So this is a dashboard, and you've probably seen a gazillion like it. You're happy with it. You've developed it. It has interactions, um, and so that when you click in on, on you know, your action filters, it's filtering just as you expect. You're real happy. It's not an overuse of color. You've even embedded some tool, um, some visas and tooltips and you're real happy with us. These are the three things that I would always suggest having in the back of your mind um, before you productionalize your dashboards. One, most people will do this. So this is a great dashboard, nothing wrong with it. Most people will say, you know what though, I really want a brand now, uh, meaning that I kind of want people to know, you know, this is my organization. So I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna fit the image and make sure it fits. And then I'm gonna go, of course, when you do this here, it's gonna take me to something that I wasn't going to show, but here we go. Okay, so here we go. I put in my company logo here. And you see this, I see this all day long, might position a little bit better, um, but now I've kind of um, branded this, I've used that Tableau colors, um, and I've got my Tableau logo in the upper left or wherever it's most appropriate. The problem with this is, yes, you've added an image, but what th that's all you've done and so a few years ago um actually probably closer to, to a decade now um a gentleman at norfolk southern by the name of andy piper said there's a better way to do this um to get an image on your on your screen but also use that real estate kind of in a unique way and i'm going to take you to what I call my Tableau hover. And this is just a sheet. Rather than using an image, I am going to use a sheet. And most typically, I will take the sum of the number of records or the minimum of number of records and just display that as text, which is, of course, kind of boring. Um, but I want to change that text to a shape. And then using my custom shapes, I can go in and select any number of custom shapes. And I have a number of um, shapes in my, in my Tableau repository called Tableau icons. I'm going to select that. And now I have a Tableau icon similar to my image um, that I used prior. However, now I have something a little bit even cooler. I have the availability to use tooltips so that when the when a customer hovers over this Tableau icon, he's going to he or she are going to see anything I wish to display. For instance, how to use this dashboard it might be just a well, you know, just a, a a few little lines of of what the dashboard does. Um, but I can also put in um, some insert some fields that I will never have to update, such as what's the workbook name? What's the data source? And most importantly, when was this data last refreshed? So I put this all into my tooltips. And now when my user hovers over that image, I get a tooltip. And of course, I could modify that to be one author, two authors. I could say, you know, the, the digital transformation team, whatever I wanted to put in there, I have access to. So that when I have now using that hover, I can see that very, very quickly. Yes, I could put some more information. I probably could put in something about, um, you know, for more information, hover over it. What I typically did and what we typically did in, in, in my former life was that we would just train users. Every dashboard was branded. If you wanted to see information about that hover over our company logo, it's going to show you some more information. People get used to that. People understand that. Um, probably, though, as you're starting out, you'd probably want to put something here, very maybe small and in descript saying, you know, hover here for more information about the dashboard. So that is tip number one. Tip number two is then, okay, Paul, if you're not that crazy about images, um, how, how would you use an image? And that leads me to tip number two. I'm going to float in an image. 
here. And I'm going to select from, I'm gonna go ahead and center that and choose, here we go. It is going to go to a little email icon. I'll apply that and click okay maybe resize it just a little bit. Now, most people say, well, Paul, where are you getting these images? Um, I am just Googling. Google is your friend. Um, I take these images. I use something called Snagit Editor then to color it as I see fit. Um, some people use, you know, literally use PowerPoint. So you can you can use a number of, um, or paint, anything will, will work. Um, and this allows me to to kind of customize a set of images. I needed this to be white. If it was black up here on a blue background, it probably wouldn't be um, that useful. So I'm just, I've am just i just got an image out here. It's not gonna do anything yet, um, but it's just going to display this little email icon. And I'm gonna click the drop down and click edit image. And the cool thing about um, actually placing an image on your dashboard is that this little option here, URL opened when image is clicked. And I'm just gonna drop in a little mail to URL. And actually I can do a couple of things here. I can show to whom I want this to be emailed to when I click, but I've also got another option here, which is the subject line. I can actually embed what the subject line is going to be when my end user clicks on that icon. So let's look and see what that happens. I'm just gonna go ahead and click okay and apply. And now when I click on that image, it's going to open up my default email. It is going to mail to whomever I designate. That could be an individual, it could be a team, um, it could be one or two individuals. Um, and it automatically embedded the subject. So now my end user says, you know, I have a question about this dashboard, blah, blah, blah. And they will then be able to email either the developer or the team of developers with any questions they may have about the dashboard. So very, very easy way to, for an end user to get, um, to get to the development team. So what does this all look like on server? Well, let's see here. We are going to go to, right here. And this is what I have now on server. Now I have added the little text here that says have questions, email the developer. And so they click that and this is setting up um, or is up on my Tableau um, test environment, my online. Once again, I have my hover. I now have my way to contact my um, to contact the developers as an end user. Everything is great. That is tip number two. Finally, um, and this is probably the easiest thing to do um, once you are on Tableau Server. The two things that I showed um, prior to this point, I'm all on desktop with you know on my local machine. This next tip actually works best when you are um, on Tableau Server. So I'm just going to edit this existing dashboard. And here we are in edit mode, looks very, very much like I'm on Tableau desktop, but I'm actually editing it in my browser. And so the third thing I wanted to show was how to embed ask data directly on your dashboard. Ask data is relatively new. Um, most people, when they attempt to navigate it, they're actually going into the server themselves to do that. And I was thinking, well, is there a better way? And this, I think, is a better way. On the lower left, within the object sections, you can see that I now have an ask data object that I can float right onto my dashboard.
With ask data, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, it is a way to use natural language programming to just ask questions of this data set that I'm currently using within the Superstore Stales um, dashboard. Now, there is one little thing that you have to set up prior to. You have to create a lens for ask data to work. I've already created a lens, and typically a lens is, is a, even more curated than the data set um, that you're using for super for your dashboard. For instance, if there were IDs in there that were kind of meaningless to your end user, you probably would want to exclude that from your your lens. So this is kind of a a, a much highly um, not really aggregated. Um, view, but more curated. So I'm taking out columns that wouldn't make sense for an end users to, to query with natural language programming. So with this, I typically take this entire ask data and superimpose it on my dashboard here, like so. Now, Obviously, this would not be a, a great interface because it's impeding the, the way that I'm looking at, at my dashboard. I want to give the users an option to go into Ask Data. And with that, I can just click on the Option button, and I can add a Show Hide button. And here it is. So what does that mean? That means that when I click on my X, I'm going to hide that. And when I click now on my little hammer, I'm going to show my ask data. OK, so I'm on my ask data. Here we go. And now I can say, I don't know, some some profit. And I'm able to sum profit and maybe say by, I don't know, state. And so now by using just natural language, I am able to build visualizations on the fly using ask data. That's just literally one click away from, um, from within your dashboard. All right, so we're real close here. We have our ask data button here, and I can toggle back and forth and the users can toggle back and forth. But now you're saying, well, Paul, that, that looks great, but you've spent a lot of time in making sure everything looks good. Um, and you've got this big, ugly black X up there and this hamburger doesn't really match what, what you're, what, you know, the look and feel of my dashboard. Um, but once again, very, very easy to change. I click the option button here. I'm going to edit that button. And when it when the item is shown, I can say, all right, what do I how do I want to present this? And what image do I want to use when the item is currently shown or the item is currently hidden? And so I can choose images. In fact, once again, using um, using my um, my Snagit editor, I've just created these little images for open and close, and I can choose that one. So now when I am looking at this, and I think I did exactly opposite, but I'll, I'll go with it. I'll publish the view because now when I view this, I now have a dashboard with buttons here that will say, all right, here's my dashboard. I want to open Ask Data. I want to query that. I find what I want. I click the button, and it changes back from close to, to open. So real three easy things that you can add really within a matter of minutes, a hover, that has um, information um, about the workbook, the authors, and when it was last refreshed, a quick way of adding a button here to email either the developer or the team of developers, and finally a way to really quickly get 
to um, to your ask date if someone has a maybe a question that's a little bit deeper than the dashboard is currently displaying um, and real quick easy way to get to your ask data interface with that I think I have I have um, finished. So, is there if there's any questions? I guess I don't know. If we finally got the Q and A or the chat working, um, but real easy way. I'll have this up um, on the the um, my my Tableau public profile, and you can download it. Look it under the hood. Even even um, capture the images if you wish and put make them your own. Oh. Yes. This has been great, man. Ooh, hold on. All right. Hit the little button. See what happens. And <laughs> where are you? There he is. <laughs> um, Paul, I loved the inclusion of the ass data with the lens. You know, it's one of those things that, um, as as we were playing with our uh, tablet online, and since like lenses showed up, and I was like, what is this? Um, and like, I think it's finally gotten to a place to your point where it's like, hey uh this is what a lens is and this is how you use it and uh you giving people the ability to leverage it inside of the dashboard i think is super cool um, i used to i, I used to i used to have a dashboard and it might be on public as well i called it my my um it called the perfect viz you might remember that nelson because i showed oh, that yes. a couple times okay it's and my great. perfect viz was a little dot in the page i even showed this to, to all the tableau employees way back in the day and it was just a dot and you, you know, this was all long before animation, but I basically used the pa the pages um, and it took that dot and created a unicorn because I said, there is no such thing as a perfect viz. In fact, the perfect viz is going to generate as many questions as it answers. And with natural language programming, the ability for business users to come up and ask their own questions, that's a game changer. The yeah. problem is you don't want your users to have to stop here, go into server, even though they're in server, and, and start from another, you know, from step one. This yeah. actually, you know, if they have additional questions, so long as it's baked into the data set, they'll be easily, easily be able to get to them um, in, in literally one click. Love it. <laughs> Nicole, what'd you learn? Anything fun? Definitely the ask data. It's one that because you have to like click out and it's a little bit more nuanced, like we just really have avoided implementing it because I can barely get people to like click the download an image or download a you know cross tab button on the server, let alone like go out and do the ask data. But that's really cool to be able to get it in there as well. I love the hover tool tips um, on an image. I use that on my Tableau public ones all the time to shove my data sources in there so I don't have to make them pretty. Um, but it's a great one for business dashboards too. <laughs> Anything that we can do as developers to help the end user get to their answers quicker. Um, typically, all probably all of the questions go on to an IT ticket. And you know that IT loves to manage their tickets. Um, and then they've got to figure out, well, who's the owner of the dashboard and then try to get them involved. This takes out so many needless steps, usually can be answered in a question, you know, you know in a in a sentence or two. Um, and it makes just for a much happier environment. And, and then finally, the ask data component, very quick way of, of without, I mean, and they could have done this before, right? They could have downloaded the data, maybe investigated it on a, in a row or column kind of format, but this gives them within that um, within that ask data container really to be able to dig yeah. a little bit deeper with 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 questions, and they don't even have to really even know Tableau. Tableau will even help with um, get the right answer or right questions okay. asked. Well, and, and Paul, one of the things that I think you're pointing out that I think is really worthwhile for everybody who's on this call to, to think through is like, you're, you're talking about, you know, I've learned these things and, you know, some of these things, if they're done well, they actually become kind of organizational norms. Like we normally put this logo up here and, and we train our users that this logo is always here and it always does this thing. Uh, and like, you know, one of the things I would suggest is like, that's like the best and highest use of 
of like the IT side, like to make sure that we've got that level of consistency so that we're not creating noise. Well, Paul always does this and Susie always does that and Jane always does this and they do three different things. And so the users don't have consistency, right? You know, this is a great opportunity for, you know, enablement of here's how we do it here. And then the same thing with ask data, right? You know, if we create these lenses, uh, you, you also have the ability to create like synonyms and phrases and stuff that allow you to take, you know, the column name in a database and turn it into the way that people actually speak. Um, because there's nothing more frustrating than, well, they gave this to me and they told me that this is how I could answer the next question. And, um, but that part wasn't done yet. Right. So, um, and, and that speaks to sure those things happen. That, that speak, speaks to something that you've always been sensitive about, which is branding. And you've worked with, and I've known you now for over a decade, you've worked with some of the biggest companies here in Atlanta. Um, and, you know, so if you have a company that's, you know, so we'll just, we won't use any real names, but, you know, lumber and hammers, you want all that formatting to be, you know, you, you want those, the, the presentation of the dashboards to have that same look and branded look and feel. Um, and so that everyone's eye is always drawn to the right place on the yeah. sheet um, and that they can quickly um, identify any issues and be able to contact people, um, you know, with any questions. So branding is a, is, is really, and it's, it's an easy thing. It's a fun thing because you go to the marketing department and you go, every marketing department has got a, a, a you know, a, 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 a two inch binder of this is what our business cards look like. This is what our website, you use those color schemes and you build your dashboard around those color schemes. Yeah. Well, and, and so much as Paul, to your point, comes back to this idea of user experience, right? And, and when we think about the word experience, it's, it's what is the feeling, uh, the emotion that is generated as I engage with this, right? And oftentimes, like, we don't get a second chance to make a first impression. And so you want, you know, this to be informative and useful so that people will come back the next time they have a question, look at the data again, you know, and so forth. Because, you know, if you build a dashboard, nobody uses it and the adoption doesn't happen. Uh, did you really build anything? And so that's always the you know, uh, value as a function of adoption when it comes to analytics at the end of the day. So, yeah. Awesome. All right. Thank you, guys. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank certainly. You. All right. We are going to move on to our second speaker, Matt, and then pulling up his bio. Um, so after several years working at agency side marketing analytics, Matt completed a career long dream where he joined the Tableau solution engineering department earlier this year. Since then, he's helped build integrations, dashboards and solutions to showcase how Tableau, Salesforce and Slack are better together. When he's not searching for new ways to visualize and understand data, you can find Matt playing guitar or on a long pensive walk to the couch. Matt. Matt playing that guitar that's right there behind your shoulder? Is that the one we're playing? It's one of them. This one might actually be gathering more dust than being played, but <laughs> I can Love. see shadows of multiple on there on your wall. Mm, the yes. one other in this room, at least. <laughs> Excuse me. Love it. Well, thanks for that awesome intro. We'll go ahead and share the screen. And also, you know, thanks for having me. And uh, thank you to Paul for that, that great uh, presentation. You know, as per usual, I always learn something you know, here at ATUG. I'm closing some tabs from answering the question. Can you see a slideshow? We see you. See me? We see the whole shebang, man. You're looking okay, great. Cool. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Thanks. That's, I, that's what I was looking for. Get out of the way. Great. Well, um, welcome to this session. Thanks again, everyone, for having me. We're going to talk about data story in Tableau. Um, I guess before that, we'll get into a bit of who I am. Uh, not going to belabor this too much, but I do have a background in marketing analytics, um, and I generally learned Tableau from the data fam. Um, there wasn't really a lot of resources uh, back then. I, I have not been around as long as... Uh, I can't show you any... Uh, you know, seminal pictures from ATUG's inception. But uh, there was a time certainly when there wasn't much info online and really one of the best ways, and I still believe one of the best ways to get better at Tableau is to attend these user groups. So they've, they've been um, 
big help for me over the years. I was fortunate to join Tableau in, in January of this year. Uh, again, that's kind of like a, a, a big uh, goal of mine. I, I do love, truly love Tableau. Uh, and, you know, it, it, it changed my entire trajectory in my career. And I, I generally, genuinely love being in the software. So here are a few of logos from the, uh, the agencies I worked at. Uh, with more time, I would have drawn an arrow between them in some sort of chronological order, but uh, I didn't. So uh, here's some of the guitars that might get played on a more regular uh, basis there in the um, the dungeon <laughs> basement thing. Um, here's the quick viz while I kind of set up where we're going. So I uh, kind of already moved through the idea, you know, worked on these marketing analytics teams for a few agencies and, you know, our tasks were similar, or my task was similar at these agencies generally. Um, and I imagine it's similar in many of your organizations, right? Every week, you need to push out some sort of pulse report for a check-in call, you know, with your clients. Um, you might spend, for us, we spent so much time getting the data imported, QA, harmonized. And then, of course, by the time we wrote and vetted those insights, uh, we were probably 30 minutes from walking into that check-in call every week. Um, you know, meanwhile, right, our teams, you know, even us and our stakeholders, you know, asking us to evolve the reporting, you know, we want deeper, richer insights or to answer new questions that we've identified along the way. I thought Paul had a great point in his section that, you know, maybe there's no such thing as a perfect dashboard. And ironically, sometimes making an amazing dashboard can introduce many new questions, right? Because you didn't have that visibility before. So with all of those factors in the mix. My question internally, I, I don't know how popular it would have been to phrase this um, externally, but the question for me always was, you know, where are we supposed to find the time? We're having trouble hitting deadlines as is, writing the, and vetting those insights every week. And it siphons time, away, time and effort away from mm -hmm. us evolving analytics maturity and making better decisions, right? So, the question was always like that that's a great insight but we need to go deeper right so let me talk to you about how we can do that and we can tableau can help free up your day-to-day -day writing insights so that you can work on bigger meatier questions of your data so to flip over here to just a simple viz this is based on superstore you'll probably recognize uh, the title of a product or two um, but figured it would make sense to start with, um, you know, a viz that we all, or rather a data set that, that we all know and love. Okay, great. So enter data story, right? Uh, this is new to Tableau Cloud. So getting used to that. New to Tableau Cloud in 22.2. Um, right now, this is only on Tableau Cloud, but it will be coming to server later this year. It's a drag and drop extension that's gonna generate plain language explanations about your data. Uh, each narrative is going to highlight key data insights with built-in analytics like distribution, correlation, trends, volatility, clustering, and more. And then, you know, not only that, but these insights are going to be dynamic and they're gonna evolve as your analysis does. So let's take a look at that, right? You've got a pretty standard dashboard here. We know, how much we're in in terms of sales. It's a 16% increase versus last year's prior value of 161K, so on and so forth. This It's a good dashboard, right? We have a number of insights. It's also interactive. So if we click on California here, we're going to see you know, the viz is going to change. We went from 187,000 down to the 42,000 here in California, also corroborated by our bands up here. So it's a good dashboard, right? This works, but now we have insights, right? And they're dynamic and they evolve as the analysis does. When we clicked, um, let's click on Texas, for example. When we click Texas, it's going to rewrite this story. It's going to adjust down to this filtered down Texas. We can see there are 15 subcategories we're interested in and 16K total in sales. Not only that, it's going to tell you what are the top three candidates for driving that sales. It's been driven by copiers, book cases, and then storage last. Now, book cases for us 
that might be a relative newcomer to our product mix. And if it produced the second most sales in Texas year to date, that's worth drilling into. So it'd be great if we could just click it, right? So not only are these insights generated about your data interactively without you really having to work harder to get them, they allow you to drill deeper because they're hyperlinked themselves, right? So drilling further into this story, not only do we know that this new product category, bookcases, is performing well, but we can actually tell, you know, once we click, we can see and understand which items within bookcases drove this category's success. So of course we've got a scatter plot over here, but let's check this out. You know, you would see on this, because we have sales on X axis and then profit on the Y, we can see that this is really a high performing uh, product for us, this five shelf Atlantic metal bookcase, right? We can see that it's high in sales, it's, it's decently high in profit. It's really leading the pack. And if we examine our data story over here, we can see that this is corroborating it. It's pulling this out of our viz. It's saying, hey, this stands out with the highest values for sales. Well, we know that's true, right? It's the furthest right dot. Um, but then also it's got uh, a relatively high value for products. And then what's also cool about this, it's gonna tell you the other end of this, you know, this Souter Mission Library bookcase. It's a very elaborate title for a bookcase, but we can see that this uh, isn't doing so hot, right? It does have um, high sales, uh, but it's actually doing that at an unsustainable profit margin. So now that we've kind of seen this, you know, the results is an experience uh, telling dashboard viewers what they need to know in a format they understand intuitively. So let's take a closer look and build one for ourselves. Um, we're here to learn much to, I guess, Nelson's son's chagrin, right? Uh, we're here to learn. So I'm going to hit edit on this uh, to bring it into web edit for us. And let's let's get started. So I cheated a little bit uh, so we don't have to mess with all the layout containers. I decided to go ahead and pre-populate one for us here. Great. So you will notice that there, if you're running 22.2, and I, if you're not, I do feel your pain, trust me. Uh, I was on 10.5 for, for the longest time, but you'll see down here in the objects pane uh, that we now have an option for data story. So it's pretty much as easy as just dragging this in. Like we said, uh, it's a drag and drop extension, right? So you drag it in and it's gonna produce a, a modal window for us. I'm gonna drop it right here. First things first, um, you're going to have to choose a worksheet to write about. So it's going to point to any dashboard, excuse me, worksheet on this dashboard. Um, there's a lot we could probably get into here, but idea being, you want to probably select something with measures that you're interested in, right? Um, in this case, we're going to choose this exact product scatter uh, because that's actually connected to this scatter plot here. And it's it's tracking a few things we're primarily interested in. It's tracking sales, it's tracking profit, and also the product level, which products are really doing well. So we're gonna select this worksheet. Um, and you'll, you're will you about to see that the viz doesn't actually necessarily have to be visualizing the measure for it to be pulled into your data story. Uh, this is great uh, because you can actually just put, in this case, orders and products are just on detail. They're not being visualized, but they are a part of the viz so that we can pull them into the data story and understand what's going on there too. So for one moment. Okay, cool. So we want to track our KPIs, right? Sales and profit are most important to us. Orders and products are important too. Just They're not our North Star. So we're going to put these measures in order of uh, their priority for our team. And we're actually also gonna flip the dimensions. We're gonna put subcategory first because we want the analysis to first identify which subcategories are, are gaining or losing traction. And then subsequently, which products who are children to that subcategory, which ones are driving those shifts, right? So. Point of order, if you try to pull a third dimension up here, it's going to tell you that it can't do it. Maybe this will change. I'm not sure. Uh, but for now, uh, two is your max. You can actually see the stories writing in, in, in the background right now. Um, Tableau is actually going to go ahead and tell you 
which one it believes is your best fit. If you probably set it on this kind of area chart, it's going to recommend a continuous because it's more date based, right? But in this case, you know, we don't have a date really on this scatter plot. So we're going to go with discrete. We're going to hit done. So really, you know, there you have it. We have a data story. And just to kind of illustrate this being interactive and all that good stuff, let me go ahead and click California again. And we're going to watch that data story evolve. It went from, you know, the 187,000 in sales year to date down to this 42K, 42K observe in California here, right? But if we look a bit closer, it's not perfect, right? I don't know many people who are going to be thrilled about reading total sum of sales current. But that just doesn't make sense, right? The underlying calcs are pulling through. So we need to do something about this. Uh, beyond that, formatting is important, especially for things like sales and profit. I want to see that dollar sign, right? Um, and then finally, we're looking at multiple dimensions here between subcategory and product name, but Tableau doesn't know how to pluralize these fields. So this wouldn't be Tableau if we didn't have some hooks under the hood, right, to edit this stuff. So I'm going to try and move quickly here. Uh, you can actually edit how verbose the uh, the insights are. I don't even know if verbosity is a real word, but I do love to say it. And I like to allow viewers to change this on the fly so that your stakeholders can choose just how wordy, I guess, their insights are. Um, drilling down, when you have multiple dimensions, Tableau doesn't know how to refer to them, right? Um, and this can get super confusing if it does this. It tends to name the first one entity and the next dimension subcategory. But in this particular case, that's actually extra dangerous, right? Because it's, we're flipping our, our dimensions. So you have an option here to, to specify to Tableau how to refer to these fields. And you can see this in the, up, in the background updating. It's now going to say, instead of entities, subcategories, when it's talking about subcategory. Beyond that, you can actually update here the measure labels. So now it's not pulling in the underlying calc, right? You can see it's updating the total sales is so on and so forth. In the interest of time, we're not going to do it to these other ones, but same process, right? There's more we need to set up. We want to set the formatting. So we'll go ahead and on profit, set this to currency. But another important thing, especially if you've worked with any efficiency metrics, right, is sometimes when a number goes up, that's good. But sometimes when a number goes up, that's bad. Uh, so you can actually tell Tableau that here so it knows how to bake that into the insight. In this case, of course, as profit goes up, that's a good thing. So we'll go ahead and select good and then do the same thing here for uh, sales current, right? Set that to currency, uh, larger values mean good. And then we're not gonna even click through all of these crazy options uh, in the interest of time. But the final one I wanna touch on here is just a little bit of you know formatting. So we'll bump that up to 16 font size and also condense the view to kind of maximize the real estate we've got. Great, so let's watch this kind of load through. And you can see we've resolved some of those issues from before, right? We can see it's not the underlying calc anymore. We've got the formatting on our, our measure, uh, so on and so forth. So maybe let's, let's drill in again and just watch this kind of evolve. So we'll just click before, I think we had Texas, right? Now we've got California. We can see that accessories are the second highest in that category. I would click on machines, but if you've used Superstore before, you know it's just a printer. So um, accessories, it's gonna give us a little more to visualize here, but you can see when we click that, we're just drilling in, drilling into the insight. And this is how people think, right? You answer one question. Okay, well, what did that? Enhance, enhance, enhance. So drilling deeper, we can see, okay, well, this Razer Tie Mat PC gaming headset stands out with the highest values for sales and profit you know, so on and so forth. And check that out on our scatter plot. It gave us the insight before we could even pull it off the viz. This is an awesome way to for your teams to kind of free up the time spent on insights, whether you're copying and pasting them over, ideally not, or really putting this in the hands of your stakeholders and say, hey, you've got some questions, go answer them. And I think a, a tool like this in conjunction with that amazing ask data module right, that uh, Paul walked us through can really make these things 
the next level of interactivity. We can almost extend ourselves in this longer tail, right, of being able to enable and empower our stakeholders, whether they're internal to our organization or external. So that's really a lot of what I wanted to go through here. Um, so, you know, if you have any, I can't, I would publish this to public, but uh, data story doesn't work over there just yet. Um, so maybe more to come there. But one final call out I wanted to make here, just as a kind of a caveat or thing to watch out for, data story will only work if you are connected to a published data source. So just bear that in mind and kind of go back here real quick and uh, show you that. But you can have other data sets here. This is just an Excel or it's CSV, I think. Um, but this is the published data source and we can see it's hyperlinked here. So anyway, uh, thank you so much for your time. And uh, yeah, on to our next uh, presenter. Thank you. And I heard about data stories at the Tableau conference, but I've never really seen like a deep dive into it. So that was really exciting and really helpful. Um, that's like one of my biggest things is I want to write these stories, but for an interactive dashboard, you can't write it for like every place a user Never. click. So this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, Matthew, I, I, when I think about kind of getting that adoption that we talked about with Paul a minute ago uh, and like kind of inviting people into, you know, I'm not used to looking at a scatter plot and I'm not really sure how to interpret this thing. You know, it's <clears throat> super tempting to try to like write out that narrative and so forth. Uh, I'm such a fan of kind of the acquisition that has led into data stories um, because I think it it's kind of it can be that bridge of you know but what does this mean what is like I know this is probably important right because there's something red on here uh, or whatever uh, and but like so what like I don't get it right like, help me but but Matthew Pimenta is not sitting there next to me explaining it to me and so in lieu of you know, you or whoever amazing person is building this thing, you now have this kind of data stories uh, component that can sit there and and at least be the bridge to kind of explain like, this is what this means and this is why it's significant. And when we want it to go up or we want it to go down and so forth. So I'm, I'm super excited. I'm, I'm a huge fan of data storytelling. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks for that. And also thanks for touching on the, the acquisition. That's an important piece there, but I didn't know how to get that into the, the narrative but that's definitely a good call out yeah yeah that uh that acquisition was one that happened like right at the end of 2021 and then it was like how to you know uh with uh narrative science and so how does it actually be get uh and become alive inside the product and so i'm excited to see that it's now getting baked in and uh, like i'm super pumped to see the the use cases for this so it'll be cool Right. Well, awesome. So cool. we have some amazing present. We had some amazing pre presenters and Tableau knowledge, and we have some time. So we'd love to open it up for some Q&A and I mean, really anything that you guys want to ask, Paul, Matt, Nelson, myself, just let us know. Yeah, and also uh, definitely open to questions, but also would love to chat to um, you know, on potential topics, potential speakers, um, you know, uh, locations and so forth. So uh, wanted to, to open it up. You know, this is where things get really crazy. Uh, you guys throw out anything you, you want into the chat uh, from a question perspective or ideas. We'll kind of read them out um, and so forth. But yeah. So First question I see, Nicole, is uh, data story exclusively available to 2022 Tableau versions? Matthew, you, you kind of spoke to that. You want to jump back in um, and just kind of give us the, the 411 on when and how folks can begin to use this? You bet. Um, well, Derek, that's a great question. And uh, thanks, Nelson. I was actually typing out this response to uh, Derek. Uh, it is exclusive to a few things. One is not only 2022, but 2022.2. Two two dot two, which is really our most current version right now. It's only on Tableau Cloud, which is the same thing as online. We rebranded it again, so um, those are your limitations there, and it has to be attached to a published data source. 
Very good. Yeah, great question. And I will start singing if uh, you don't have anything else. <laughs> Say. And that's quite the threat. Um, let's see. Jen just put in the chat our next um, user group meeting for next month. While we don't have the speakers yet, you can already go ahead and register for September. And another plug is if anyone wants to, you know, kind of join our list of speakers to tap on, just email us, let us know, put in the chat. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and maybe you have something you want to share next month or the month after that. Uh, we would love to hear from you. Um, I remember... Uh, early on, like coming to ATUG uh, and seeing stuff, I was like, man, like uh, there's some, like there's a bunch of cool stuff on the screen, but there's some cool stuff I'm doing back uh, at where I am. And I, I bet it would be, you know, cool to share it. And the answer to that is probably yes. Um, so we would love to, if you, if you're working on something cool, it's a great opportunity to share that with the community. It's how we all get better. And, and I would like to add to that, you know, the, the 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 differentiator with tableau is its community we have a lot of great people um doing a lot of amazing stuff with tableau um some of it's easy some of it is some of it's very very complex and difficult um present you know that is the the a that that your 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 skill sets going to get better your presentation skill sets um, are going to get better and you don't know who hasn't seen I can remember um, tips and tricks um, Nelson and I were sitting right next to one another and the presenter was talking about grabbing special images um, from the character map and embedding them so you can if you wanted to say instead of saying percentage change and you wanted to have the little delta so um, you could just cut and paste it right into that and and we both looked at each other and go I totally forgot that that you could do that um, and and so there's all kinds of cool things that you can do with Tableau um, that could be just little minute things but it's always great I can I can tell um, I went to a, an a tug um, and and um oh i can't remember who was presenting um it was newell rubbermaid on of all things they were presenting on their recordables and their the the amount of people that were injured and that dashboard was so cool that i ended up using that two years ago um mm -hmm. or two years later because it was just it left an impression so um everybody's doing a little bit different um obviously you want to to bring a clean data set and not you know bring company data with you um but you know build it upon something like that and show us what you're doing it really does help you and it helps the community as well absolutely yeah uh one of the things that i would do as i would do trainings in the past is uh i would really try to ramp uh, as i went so if i did like a 30 40 minute presentation you know i want to start pretty basic and then kind of get a little more intricate. And then like, you know, I wanted to lose uh, a decent portion of the audience by the end because that that challenged the people that were really good. Um, and so you wanted everybody to get something out of it. And so that's another good way as you think about um, building these trainings at your organizations and coming and presenting is like, you know, start and then ramp um, and then, you know, go back and explain. Um, Matthew, Chris asked a great question that is just um, would be something for be interesting for you. Uh, what was the the app or feature that you used to spotlight your mouse? Uh, I'm curious. yeah, that's a great question. So this one I think is for Mac only, but it's called Mouse Pose. Okay. Uh, it's like Expose, but Mouse Pose. I'll, I'll shoot it. I'll drop a link in here. But worth it. It also does the, the kind of click and right click. There you go. Epicenter thing. So we had a question in the chat about the lenses. And uh, Paul, if you can just talk a little more high level about like what is a lens and is it just for us data or when would you use it? You are muted. <laughs> a lens basically curates the data set 
to something that is going to be even a little bit more digestible to your end users. Many times we'll pull in a data set, and I'm, I'm this way, I like to see everything. Um, um, as so long as the, 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 the performance of the dashboard is not impacted, I'll bring across ID columns, I'll bring across things that an end user would never want to um, to analyze. However, a lens takes that, and so perhaps you have IDs on SKUs. Um, no one's going to, or even an ID on a row, no one's going to do analysis really on IDs. You take and say, I only want my lens, when you think of a lens, a, an eyeglass lens, to focus on this narrow subset of data. And you can have multiple lenses from the same um, published data source. So you can have, um, you don't have to limit it to just a few things. If you're working with a, with data sets that perhaps is um, sales and inventory, you could have a lens solely on sales and a lens solely on inventory. So it just narrows the focus. I did see another question, and this is intriguing. Uh, we've got a lot of smart people in the room. They want to, when you press the email icon with the URL, to be able to also embed the workbook name as well in that URL? That's a great question that I don't have an answer for. <laughs> um, it's, it's totally doable. Oh, is it? It is. The okay. way that, yeah, the way that you would do it. So workbook name is a, is a global variable. Like, so uh, you know, the way that Paul created that is he's basically using kind of a URL action but the, the beginning, instead of HTTP colon, it is actually mail to colon. And there's a whole kind of format that you can do that will basically kind of have, hey, here's what I want the subject to say. And because uh, the name of the workbook is a um, global variable inside of Tableau, uh, you can totally do it. The only question in my mind is whether or not you'd have to do a URL uh, in like in, uh, character encoding of it, which just basically means like, uh, where there's spaces, you have to like put like percent twenties, uh, but there's a function, uh, at least in all tricks that does that. I'm not, I can't remember if there's one in Tableau, um, but uh, that in theory should work. Um, and, and therefore in theory, you could put all sorts of data. Now putting an array, like an, a table would be really tricky, um, but like where the data point is the same for all data points or where the, the piece of information be up the same for all data points, like workbook name should be able to do it. And if you can get fancier, the JavaScript API. Um, and that's where I would have said, yeah, that exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That could even... I think you can do the name without the JavaScript API. If you wanted to do, like insert a table, now you're talking about an array that's going to be a JSON and that's going to be a JavaScript API. Yeah. I think. All right. Well, Matt Sealer, that sounds like a future presentation and I can't wait for you to do it. <laughs> Nicole, you wanna close this out? I was gonna say, yeah. If we don't have any more questions, I need to share. So thank everyone for coming and thank everyone who Puts, gets these put together and thank you to our presenters, Paul and Matt, definitely learned a lot today. Um, let us know, Jen put in the chat all of our like social media links, there's the email for ATAG, definitely like get in touch with us, let us know, you know, if you want to host or if there's just topics you want us to find presenters for that you want to see presented on at ATAG, let us know your topics and that's what I have. I had another thought and I lost it, Nelson. <laughs> It was awesome. Thanks uh, to everyone. And, and Jen, thank you as always for keeping us going uh, and to all the folks at Tableau that helped us put us on. Uh, we look forward to seeing her back uh, in September. September. Um, awesome. See y'all soon. All right. Thank you.